Hello, my name is Jessica Drossen and I create actions, textures, and overlays for photographers. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I edited this portrait of Victoria and I'll focus on how I used the basic retouching actions included in the JD One Click Portrait Perfection set to give a subtle softening and enhancement for my close-up portrait of a young teenager. My first step will be to select the One Click Basic Retouch layer from my Actions palette. Once it's highlighted, I simply push the play button. The four edit layers that are created by the One Click Basic Retouch are all nested inside of the folder in your Layers palette called One Click Retouch. Simply click on that little arrow next to the folder in order to reveal these individual edit layers. Now you can see the Sharpen, Soften Skin, Bright Eyes, and Lip Gloss layers inside of this folder. To start, I select my Soften Skin layer and then go to my Tools palette and select a soft brush. Next I go up to my Brushes palette and I select a brush size that matches the area that I want to be covering when I brush into the skin. Now I go here to select the color. I make sure that I'm using a white soft brush and then I'm painting into the black mask. It's that box that's highlighted next to the word Soften Skin. And I'm going to go ahead and just start painting into my skin tones. Right now I'm painting in with a fairly low opacity. I'm going to boost it up just a little bit. You can use the opacity slider to control just how much of the skin softening you want to be using. Now I'm going to speed this video up just a little bit here as I just paint into her skin to smooth out all the blotches. What I really like about the softened skin layer is that as you paint into it on the skin, not only are you evening out the skin tones, but you're also adding just a little bit of glow, and it's in a real subtle way, um, especially if you use lower opacities as you paint in, so it doesn't start to feel overpowering and plasticky. If at any point you're concerned that perhaps you've over-edited the skin, simply go to your Layers palette, and selecting that softened skin layer, just bring down the opacity a little bit until you're comfortable with how it looks. For most retouching, unless you're doing fashion work, I like to keep retouching pretty subtle. You can obviously make it more noticeable if you boost up your opacity to 100%, but I think that it works better to add in gradual layers at a lower opacity. Now I'll unclick the eyeball and you can see what it looked like before the skin softening and now after. The sharpen layer above the softened skin adds all of the skin textural detail, so we're going to keep that in to make it look realistic and not overly retouched. Next we're going to move to the bright eyes layer, again with a white brush that's sized to about the shape of the iris in the eyes. We're going to paint right into that colored part of the eyes and along any highlights that are in the eyes so we intensify the catch lights there. Our goal is to brighten up the color and the catch lights in a natural way. If at any point you feel like you've gone too far, again just with that bright eyes layer highlighted, go to your opacity slider and just lower the opacity overall. Okay, I'm going to tweak it just a little bit more in just a, a couple little select areas. And now I, I like how these eyes are looking. Okay, next I'm going to move to lip gloss. Again, I'm going to select an appropriately sized brush and make sure that I'm painting with white into that black mask. And I'm just sort of softly filling in areas and I'll toggle it back and forth. And I can adjust the opacity here just to make sure that I I don't want this to be overwhelming or overpowering, just a subtle gloss on those lips will be nice. When you're satisfied, just go ahead and click that little arrow again next to your one click retouch folder, and that will just make your layers look a little bit neater, it tucks everything back up, and now you can apply some of your color adjustments. For this edit, I've decided that I want a softer, cooler, slightly cross-processed look, so I'm going to go with one click urban. So I select it in my Actions palette, and then I simply hit the Play button down here below in the Actions palette. As you can see, this is going to instantly summon up a bunch of different edit layers, everything from vignettes 
to color adjustments to exposure adjustments and then it tucks it neatly back into this folder that's called One Click Urban. Again, you can click on this folder if you want to reveal it or you can work with the entire layer and just reduce the opacity here, which I'm going to do to give it a more subtle effect. Also, you can adjust the fill. Now between the fill and the opacity levels, you can tweak this to look just like you want it to. And here I'm going to just toggle it on and off so you can see the before and after. At this point, depending on your preference, you can either be finished or you can go into some of the fine tune actions here below. I'm going to go ahead and select paint in dark and I'm going to hit play and you'll see I have a black mask and I'm going to use a white soft paintbrush again in low opacity and I'm just going to paint in some of the areas under her brow, along her neck, along her cheek line there that's getting a little shadow and just accentuate some of those areas to provide a little more shape and dimension to her face. I do this in really low opacity and keep it very natural looking. Next I'm going to go to paint in light. Same thing, I hit the play button, I select my black mask, I have a soft brush that I want that's about the size that I want to be painting in with low opacity and using a white color I paint into that black mask and I'm going to just go everywhere where I see highlights and I want to accentuate highlights to give it sort of a soft glowy look. So along the tops of her cheek, um, along that side of her face, here in the background a little bit. This is a non-destructive way to add some dodging. There it is before and after. I'm just toggling it a little bit. Gonna add just a smidgen more. Now if I feel like I've over edited, again I can just go to the opacity layer and just reduce it slightly. Next I'm going to select my saturation slider. In areas where I don't want the saturation, where I feel like it's becoming a little orangey in her skin tone, I'm going to do the reverse of what I've done before. I'm actually picking a black color and I'm painting into the white mask with the black. That's going to eliminate the overall effect here and just tone it down in selected areas. Basically you just need to remember that if you have a black mask, white reveals. If you have a white mask, painting into it with black is going to hide and you just change your opacity into varying degrees. At this point you might feel like you're done. I wanted to experiment a little bit and so I went down to my one click urban folder and by clicking on that little arrow I opened it and then I selected the black and white version and I clicked that little eyeball on which by default is off. Now already the one click urban folder has been uniformly lowered in its opacity so I'm just going to go in on that specific layer and lower its opacity again. This is just going to give me a very soft pastel tone to all of my colors. It's just kind of a pretty effect that adds a little bit of a vintage softness. Now I'm going to go into certain areas like her eyes, the apple of her cheeks, her lips, a little bit of that background green, and again with my black brush set to a soft low opacity, I am going to just let some of those colors come back out. So Again, I'm painting out some of that black and white softening of tone effect and letting more of the saturation, more of that original tone come back through here in that black and white version. All right, and I'm just going to speed this video up a little bit as I paint here into the black and white conversion layer. And here I'll toggle that on and off so you can see the effect and judge for yourself whether you'd like to do something like that. And here I'm just going to do just a little bit more. I stay really loose with my editing. I don't get too fussy. I just softly go over and low past these areas until I'm satisfied with how they look. Now at this point I could elect to just be finished. I think that the one click Portrait Professional has done a great job with this image. 
but I think I want to make just a few additional refinements. They're a little bit more specialized. And so to do that, I'm going to go to the JD Beautiful World Foundation's actions. If you have them, you can go ahead and follow along with me. I'm just going to do two simple edits with them. First, I'm going to go up here to the rouge area in the retouching section of JD Foundations. And I'm going to select it and hit play. And now with a soft white brush set to low opacity and even lower opacity for the cheeks, I'm going to paint into the lips and cheeks area. Just give it a little more of a soft rosy glow, keeping it really simple. Next, I'm going to go down to the JD Foundations Detail Enhancement and Correction Brushes, and I'm going to select the Extra Sharp Detail Brush. Once it comes up, again, I'm going to be using a soft white brush with low opacity, and I'm just going to paint into areas that I want to be sharper. I have a fairly soft focus on this, and I'm just going to make sure that I've got a little more detail in her eyes, and eyebrows and maybe a, a touch around her hair. And I'm just going to slowly build more sharpening so that I, I don't go too far. Just making my brush a little bit smaller here fine-tuning a couple areas so I don't want to sharpen the skin. I just want to sharpen uh, areas like eyelashes, eyebrows, inner eyes, just that one section that I want to draw your focus to. Now I'm going to go back to the rouge layer just because I see a few little areas that look a little kind of yellowish green to me little casts that are made when we shot this. Just nothing too much, but this will help me sort of counteract some of that greenish cast that we see here around her mouth and under her nose and some of our shadows. So with a super, super low opacity brush, I'm just painting in a few of those areas to kind of counteract that greenish tone. Again, I'm not being really fussy. I'm just doing this very uh, lightly and painterly, if you will, building up tones until I'm satisfied with them. If I don't like something, if for some reason I feel like I've gone too far, all I'm going to do is switch back to black. Again, I'm reducing my opacity. And I'm just going to now painting with black into that mask. I'm going to paint out just a little bit of areas where I feel like I've maybe gone too far in just a, a section here and there. Nothing you've ever done is not tweakable here. So if you've overdone or underdone an area, you just go back in there and you paint a little more or, or take out a little. One of the last things I do to just double check and see if I think an image is done is I'll go to the contrast slider and give it a quick look. And here I think I'm just going to turn it off. And then also I'll go to the saturation slider and just verify that I either want to add a little saturation or that I think it's fine as is. All right, so I'm really happy with the way this image looks. I think it's soft and pretty. Um, it's vibrant. The retouching seems age appropriate and appropriate for this style of portraiture. I'm going to toggle this on and off really quick for you. I'm going to get rid of the uh, contrast because I didn't use it. This is what it looked like before and now I'm going to uh, add the eyeballs back again and this is the after. Alright, well thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you'll check back here often and you'll sign up for my newsletter. That way I can keep you up to date on any sales or new products, new tutorials, things that are going on. Alright, have a great day. Bye-bye.